ठीक है ये और गो हेड शंभवी प्लीज राइट हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी हैव विद अस क्रिस क्रिस इज एन इनकमिंग पीएचडी स्टूडेंट एट यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मिशिगन ही आल्सो रिसीव्ड हिज एमएस एंड बीएस फ्रॉम यूएम एंड ग्रू अप इन द स्टेट before graduate school chris worked in new york for 3 years and he enjoys board games playing and watching sports and traveling so we look forward to discussing chris publication on full body awareness from partial observations very good chris welcome please go ahead thank you cool and and please uh interrupt at any point if anyone has questions yes 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 we will thank you cool all right so um kind of the motivation for for the work uh is is something like these two pictures um to to a person we can we can kind of uh we can figure out what probably what these people are doing uh from from only a small a small part of their body visible um you know maybe maybe the person is standing or sitting maybe they're cooking or something or uh you know making cookies but uh th these are these are actually pretty pretty common like this is this is the way people look on the internet in videos when they're doing something and to to a human it's 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 pretty easy to figure out but to uh current uh machine learning models especially like human pose estimation we focus on it's it's actually actually aren't really prepared for uh images like these so the goal of the paper is is to basically uh build full body human pose in this world of truncated internet video and we'll, we we focus on predicting 3D human mesh but our method is pretty general so it could be probably used for other settings um it looks like i might have some chat oh okay for uh, questions yeah, cool. this question here yeah. so we we'll let you know no problem if there's a question we will interrupt it here yeah, yeah. great and uh okay so the the these images on the left are uh pretty typical images that uh human human pose estimation is typically trained on um by by annotating people like this so called in the wild uh models have shown impressive results even when faced with a lot of variation like setting different activity different pose uh different camera angles and even uh some occlusion and things like this but as as i kind of pointed out on the internet um it's actually pretty common that truncation is is uh apparent which which like totally causes these models to struggle it's it's really quite a different domain um in fact on on the data set we study only about 4% of frames contained the entire body visible so the the problem is 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 kind of clear uh there there's all these really good methods that exist for predicting human pose but basically none have been trained on examples like these on the right because annotations on these don't exist the 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 pose data sets are very much in the category on the left So in order to achieve our goal of of being able to predict 3D mesh in that setting um our our proposal is to self train on video and and so so that's that's kind of the motivation um i guess if if anyone if if that makes sense uh, i can just keep going yeah yeah and uh, why was the reconstruction uh, done or will you talk about it later in the what beg your pardon uh reconstruction uh yeah. how is it important in the work will you talk about it later ah uh, yeah yeah so so yep we we will talk about it later um we use uh this a couple of existing models like uh hmr is a pretty common one but basically what it does is you predict uh simple parameters smpl it's it's like a a way to parameterize a 3d human body and uh the the network predicts those and from that it's it's it basically constructs a mesh a 3d right. mesh yep um okay so so the the bulk of the method is kind of this the simple idea of self training um with with some caveats um and and the general self training framework is something like start with 
um, some, un some unlabeled frames, pred make predictions from the model on them, somehow determine some set that are good, and then train on those, and, and, and then repeat the process. And, and hopefully, basically what the model can do is it can kind of adapt to this new setting, um, become more confident on more images as it's been trained on it, and kind of expand this new training set. Um, but but there are some um, some struggles in this in this instance, and the first one is that we we already noted is that the existing models uh, make poor predictions on a lot of these frames, which of course makes it makes it tough to uh, generate good predictions and, and self train in the first place. So kind of our first um, uh, you know kind of proposed part of the method is to do this, you know, some so-called uh, annotated pre-training. And this is where we basically start from a current uh, pose data set, which is totally labeled. Um, and we basically crop the images to look like video. And, uh, and then we can train on those. And actually, as it turns out, uh, the, the video frames tend to kind of fall into a few categories most of the time. Um, it's pretty common that something like, you know, the legs aren't visible, sometimes the head isn't visible, um, sometimes only the head is visible, and, and pretty often only the arms or hands are visible. So basically we, we crop the, uh, our, our pose data set to look, to look you know, in, in some probabilities in these different categories. And this actually ends up looking a lot like video. So, and, and, and after, after training a current model like HMR on, on this, we, we actually can make good predictions on a lot of the video. Um, okay, so, so that's kind of the first part. Um, the, the next problem is that it's actually determining which predictions are good is, is not straightforward. This is, this is a uh, regression system as opposed to like classification. So it like uh, in, in classification, it, it you know often for to find if if a prediction is good, you can maybe use uh, oh is is the network confident? So maybe it's you know it thinks there's some probability uh, this image is in some category, and if that probability is high, it's probably confident. But in this in this case, we're predicting something like you know join angles or something. So it, so it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, you know, there, there's not like a clear measure of whether the network is confident. Um, so, so there's actually this previous paper that kind of has this interesting method that we basically apply here. And what it, what it is, is that we make predictions on a few small jitters of the same frame. So you, so you see like maybe we, we apply a small padding and we just uh, slightly transform the image in, in some small direction. And, and what we do is we, we compare the model predictions across the different images. And, and basically what, what tends to happen is that if the network is confident, it, it uh, generates very similar predictions across the images, uh, which, which I think kind of makes sense. And of course, if, if it doesn't know what's going on, a small change in the image can actually make the predictions change quite a bit. And so just by using a simple like variance of, of uh, you know the difference between predictions, uh, we can we can actually sort out pretty well which predictions are good. So, how many frames were used for this? Yeah, for for this step, we we used five. So we used okay. uh, like the original image, and then two images that are like up and to the left, ten and twenty pixels, and then two that are down to the right. It's it. uh, probably could have gotten away with three. Okay. Basically, I, th I think it seemed like five was pretty small and it, it seemed to work really well. So, okay. but yeah, I think this is actually a really, and a lot of people at uh, ECCB were like in, a, a interested in this part because it's, it's, it's kind of a really simple uh, approach yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I, I, that I think people are not really aware of. So I think it's, it's, it, it would be pretty interesting to use some sort of similar idea in a lot of settings for, for a confidence uh, yeah, yeah. proxy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because uh, it is way too less, and it is very beneficial if it's less, and you can predict it with uh, such a small number of frames. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you can think of, you know, even you could probably, if if this wasn't working as well, you can think of other transformations, and, mm. and kind of compare across those. Very interesting. Yeah. So, so that's kind of the second part. Um, let's see. Right. So then, so then we're, we're, we're almost there. Um, but kind of one, one remaining point is that, uh, these, the, the confident predictions still tend to be on, uh, images where most of a person is visible. So, so it's, 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 it's pretty easy to get a confident predictions in some image looking like this, but you know, some image where like very little of the person is visible, it's, it's still, uh, the, the cropping is still not quite sufficient to make as many of those. And, and you see most of the data set kind of looks more, more like this. And, and we, want, we want a data set that looks like the entire, the entire set of video. So, so our, our solution is again, to just do the same thing. And we just crop exactly the same way we did earlier. Um, and, and so now we have these like pseudo ground truth confident predictions, which we can use to train, but Basically, we we crop them so that they they actually look like uh, you know they can they can look, be very truncated like the entire video data set and we can still train on those. So that's that's basically the method. It's uh, like my professor kind of always stresses like it's it it tries to be very simple like deliberately and and. Uh, you know, I think hopefully it could be used by uh, other human pose estimation methods, or maybe even outside human pose on the internet video mm -hmm. or something. Uh, Good, because if it is way too simple, people raise eyebrows in the review process. <laughs> yeah, well, so so interesting. Like the to reviewers, I think uh, simple is like they're like, eh, I'm not sure. Like a lot yeah, of yeah. a lot of reviewers <laughs> yeah. are uh, too simple. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. So, uh, but for, uh, fortunately, I got there. I had a question. Uh, how yeah. are we judging the predictions as confident? If the pose is robust and stable throughout the frames, is it like that? Yeah, exactly. It's it's the it's that that, that idea exactly. So, like, if if you think about, uh, you know, across across a few of these, like, a, a, if the predictions are good, they're probably very robust to small changes, and and that's basically what we're testing. Uh, and and if if it's not robust, it'll go all over the place, and we're and then we probably say, you know, the first predictions are unlikely to be good. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any any other questions on the method? Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's when when you come to we are also working on some gesture recognition kind of work. So here okay. does the full uh, can it be used? Can we localize it to just the gesture alone rather than getting the full body mesh? Um, can you can you kind of explain a little more? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, here uh, based on the frames, you are getting the full body mesh, right? Yep. Yeah. So is it possible to focus only on the let's say hands or face only? Uh, on yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there. I'm actually like I'm aware of some models that only predict like hand pose, for example, or like a hand mesh. And mm. and there's yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, you could totally do that. Um, I think, I, I I think those are those models usually trained on, like maybe pictures of the hands to begin with. Right? Uh, Samu, we can shed more light on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, what I have tried using open pose, and what I'm trying to do is uh, consider one frame and take two frames preceding it and two frames succeeding it. And trying to uh, you know compare the distance between the selected key points, say your chin and your wrist, and I'm trying to measure the dis constant distance, and um, trying to train the model, classify model based on those distances. 
also i'm trying to perform a hand segmentation based thing although this reconstruction thing and pretty much you know this is unsupervised and it is very convincing um mm. but i haven't really tried this out this does seem very interesting yeah i mean that sounds that sounds a lot of that sounds pretty similar in a lot of ways yeah but our uh, like uh, process data is massive like our frame how do we how many frames do we take chamber way so um okay so the the thing is that we are trying to process around um, 20000 frames per gesture and number mm. of gestures is still not yet decided uh, it might you know go on increasing so the processing of uh, threefold there's threefold processing going on which uh, one thing is this distance calculation the other thing is cropping both the hands and then i'm trying to segment the hands so it is yeah, being can. very you know computationally right now yeah that's why i was yeah. shocked when you told few frames because we are dealing with thousands of frames for just one uh, it's just like gesture recognition that's all it's one gesture you're training the model on certain video and if you give similar video it should pretty yeah anyway yeah you go ahead we can maybe can discuss yeah okay um yeah i mean to be clear like when when we we're we're comparing across a few version like you know five let's say versions of the same image per mm -hmm. per example uh but of course there's there's going to be many uh images where uh the pose looks very similar same. like the yes. full body pose looks really similar But yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we have skipped any. Uh, I don't know. I haven't implemented it. Uh, so I have not skipped any frame because of this calculation thing. I'm just doing a 32 fps calculation and considering all the frame frames. Maybe I should. It's inefficient. Mm. Uh, inefficient in the sense we have too many frames to process. I see. Yeah, I mean, twenty thousand frames per gesture seems that yeah. seems like a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the thing is, like, the gesture is not very constant. It is uh, changing per performance, and I'm trying to make the model robust by introducing lots of noise in the data, changing yeah. the backgrounds and changing, you know, yeah. right hand with left hand and all that stuff. So because okay, uh, the issue is one. Uh, let's say one word. corresponds to let's say four movements in the body which corresponds to one word so those four movements should be captured right it's not like uh, you're just moving the hand you're making some motion with the hand and yep. you're uh, pointing to yourself so pointing to yourself the motion with the hand your face expression everything comes into play so we don't know which to skip and which to keep is that the issue that you are facing shambhavi yes sir some more okay. Okay. Anyway, Chris, you can carry on. So we will. Yeah. So, like uh, the thing, what we are trying to do is so similar to this one that uh, when I read through the paper, yes, it did give me ideas. Let's see how it goes. Maybe I should. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can circle back at the end if maybe to yeah, talk yeah. more about that. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. And go ahead. Yeah. Cool. Um. Okay. So so that was pretty much the method there. it's it's kind of this yeah as i said this simple self training idea with uh basically three different you know caveats maybe and that that's the first is self training with crops uh then identifying confident predictions using this you know method and then uh cropping the the final data set so the experiments we run um <clears throat> may, maybe try to address some some broad version of like three questions and first is uh how well do the current uh systems actually work on internet video uh can do, does this method improve the performance and also does the the self training on video improve compared to just the to just the pre training on the uh crops on the annotated data set and so as, as we we're talking about earlier uh we use these two existing models which are already trained on um you know you can kind of see some of this in the wild data but of course not the same truncated data that we have um and that's HMR and CMR like both uh you know do really well on uh, human 3.6m which is like a common human pose 3d benchmark um and then our our uh pre training goes on MPI which is a very uh standard 
um, 2D human pose in the wild data set, uh, which both models are trained on already. Um, and then, and then self-training, we use Vlog, which is, it was uh, my professor's data set. Um, it's basically lifestyle vlogs of kind of people doing daily activities, um, which, which ends up looking in pretty interesting ways. Um, and then we, we, we test as well on these. Um, and we can see that, you know, it, it does seem to fall into these different kind of distributions of, uh, you know, not seeing the legs or only seeing the hands or the head or, you know, the lower body. And then we, we, we also test on uh, three other, uh, like, internet video data sets, which uh, actually, they, they, they have kind of their own uh, idiosyncrasies, but they end up actually looking fairly similar in some of these ways. Um, and the first one is instructional videos. Uh, we also do cooking videos. <clears throat> and then some more, basically more instructional videos, but across kind of a variety of tasks. And uh, in order to evaluate, we, we kind of use a very standard uh, evaluation framework, which is to basically label where human joints are uh, key points and then figure out how often our predictions are within some threshold of these key points, which is percentage of key points or PCK. Um, <clears throat> and this is this is usually thresholded based on the heads, the person of uh, a person's head, because, you know, maybe a person is very far away in the image and their so their head would be small. So then we know that the predictions have to be in some number of pixels of, of the uh, of the annotation. And if, if their head is very close, then we, we uh, can have like a larger, uh, you know, amount of forgiveness per, per uh, it's basically just a normalizing uh, function. Um, but actually it's kind of, if we try to evaluate on this data set, we kind of have this problem that um, a lot of the time there is no head visible in the frame. So we can't really actually evaluate using this, this uh, metric. And, and we kind of have an interesting workaround. Um, another problem is that we want to evaluate uh, as much as uh, as much of the person as possible. You know, the the paper is full body awareness, and uh, there's there's kind of some tricks you can do to get good accuracy within an image without actually learning the body. Like you could think maybe in this example, you know, both arms are right here, and like. The, the person could even be down here or something, and it, and it would still be doing pretty well on key points. So our solution to, to both problems is to basically uh, annotate a lot of the frames, take, take a selection of only the frames where the head is visible so that we can calculate PCK, and then crop them to make them look like the entire data set. Um, and and this way we can calculate PCK because we have the head. We can evaluate uh, the, more of the body, even though if let's say we have these images on the right as input, we can, we can evaluate the entire body. And we can also specifically evaluate uh, key points outside of the image and, and basically different, differentiate how well uh, a model's uh, able to predict the entire body. Um, and then we also, uh, this way we can crop basically to mimic the entire data set. So we can make it look like uh, essentially what the entire data set looks like in terms of a lot of the time there's very little visible, um, but we can still basically get the whole body. Does that, and, and so, so across these four data sets, we annotate about 13K frames in this, in this test data set. Um, and our, our hope is that basically other people will use this in the future as like uh, you know some sort of benchmark and try to get uh, the try to improve these models on this set. Does that it's it's a little yeah. Kind of so I think, you, the, the cropped image has the same feature map of the entire image. Is that what is happening? Um, so so the cropped image is from is is a crop of this entire image which we annotate. And, and that's what, what is used as input. Although, mm -hmm. you know, what is evaluated is actually the entire image because we have these, you know, key points of different parts. Mm -hmm. is, was, that, was that the question or is? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. 
anything else? This, I feel like this uh, is a little yeah. bit hard to explain. So. Yeah, yeah, this is a little bit. Uh, please, uh, okay, we'll just ask them to, any question, please unmute and go ahead so that, uh, yeah, this uh, slide was a little uh, heavy. Yeah, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself or go ahead. Yeah. If not, uh, anyway, some might post in the chat because of microphone yeah. or whatever. Anyway, sure. come back. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Cool. Um, so, so we use the, the key point accuracy as we kind of hoped. Um, we also use, uh, we want to evaluate the 3D performance as well as the mesh performance. And, and the key points you can only, you can basically extract it from the mesh and you say, you know, the mesh is, left elbow is here, so that's like approximately right. But uh, basically you can use a, uh, you can use human judgment, so you use like annotators to say whether a predicted mesh is good or bad. And, and in this way you get some idea of how often the 3D predictions look are, are generally correct. Um, and then and we can also basically say if, if these agree with the, the key point, uh, observations then you know these these key points seem like a good a good test a good study um and then we mm -hmm. we also use was is there a question yeah yeah rahul do you have a question go ahead please yeah uh, my question is like from uh, we are selecting five images right to generate yeah. the full mesh yeah so can you please explain a little bit about that because uh, sure means only like uh, uh the method was like to select uh, shift flip, like you are doing some uh, pre-processing, right? So is it uh, completely okay to get 3D, like 3D shape from that images? Yeah, so so I think you're, you're talking about this, this slide, right? Where we're applying the, like the small transformations and making predictions across them. Is that right? Yes, yes. Correct. Yeah, so. So basically, each on each single frame, we can we can generate a, a, a 3D prediction, and this the w the way this is done is using some of these existing models like uh, HMR, where the the network predicts uh, a number. It predicts like 70 parameters, and using those parameters, there's basically like some fancy function that transforms these into a 3D mesh. So so like the parameters are like what is the angle of the elbow in like three different, like, a, you know, in, in uh, X, Y, Z or something. And for, for all across the body and, and using that, you, they basically can, can convert that into a 3D mesh for the person. So, so that's done on each single frame. And then what we do is we make that prediction on each of these five different versions of the image, small transformations, and, and we compare uh, the predictions across images. Is that okay? Does that answer your question, Rahul? Do you have a follow up? Yes, 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 correct. Thanks. The HMR Makes method sense. is used, right? Yep, yep. Or, yeah, and we, we also, for testing, we use uh, this other method called Graph CMR, which basically does the same thing. Okay. Okay. I think, yeah, please go ahead, Chris. Yeah, you can carry it. Yeah, sure. the laptop. Um, so, so we had these, uh, you know, people annotate whether uh, predictions are good or bad, generally. And then we also do uh, pretty standard A-B testing where we have an input image and we have two predictions where one of them is from uh, one model and one of them is from the other. And we ask people to, to say which one uh, matches the image better. And, and we allow, we can also allow for ties if they're very similar. Okay, so so starting with quantitative result or qualitative results, um, we can see that a lot of the time, uh, not shown like HMR and CMR can can make good predictions if most of a person is visible, and this makes sense because that's what they were trained upon. But in in a lot of these cases, you know, where the person is not is is pretty truncated, maybe they're at the very side of the image, maybe you can only see part of their hands. Uh, a lot of the pred predictions are pretty look pretty silly. Which, which is not surprising. Um, once we train on the cropped version of the original data set, um, 
the, the models often are able to, to get a better idea of where the key points, uh, where, where the, the joints of the person generally are. And this makes sense because, you know, it, it's been trained on these to, to identify maybe a part of a person. So, so like, you know, maybe the bottom image, it kind of sees, yeah, there's probably a person over here. Uh, you know, maybe we've seen something like this before, but it, it doesn't have a very good idea of, uh, you know, the general pose. But once, once we train on um, the, the video using this, this self-training approach, uh, we, the, the results like look, look clearly the best. Um, and, and basically by, by training in on video, uh, that we're, we're, we're letting the network learn some things like context clues, like, like it, 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 it's seen things like tables or sinks, which it can basically associate with the person often. So, you know, it's been trained to see, to identify, oh, this is probably part of a person maybe. And this is a table where a person's often, you know, to this side of the table and they're often of this scale, or, you know, this is a sink, maybe they're washing their hands or something. And, and we actually see a lot of the time when things like, you know, tables or sinks or, you know, things like this are, are present, it can actually make really good inferences about what a person looks like, even well outside of an image. Um, and based on only a little bit of them visible. So that's kind of like, that's where we see these really cool results. Does that, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And here, uh, the lighting error doesn't matter, right? Or does that come into play while you're trying to estimate? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think there are definitely videos where maybe yeah, it's very yeah, dark or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and that can maybe make predictions struggle. But mm -hmm. as it turns out, a lot, of the, a lot of the videos are made indoors and they're usually made with good lighting. Point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they're like, they're videos taken where people want to show, like, okay, I'm doing something now. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good. Yeah. It reminds me of Casey, Casey Neistat, whenever we talk of uh, Vlog. Well, sorry, what, can you repeat that? Yeah, Vlog, uh, remember Casey Neistat is the number one. Uh, Casey Neistat, never heard of him? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. no problem. Can, can, you, can, you post it, can you post it in the chat? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, he's not a researcher, he's just a vlogger. Just a popular vlogger. Oh, <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, no, no, actually, as... That's funny. I, I don't know that much about blog or like I haven't seen that many bloggers other than mm -hmm. in this data set, I guess. Yeah, he's the, yeah, <laughs> he's the poster child of all bloggers. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll cool. send you like I'll uh, yeah, I'll send you a message later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah interesting. I'm I'm not sure if any of his work makes it into the data set. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, cool. So and I think another really cool result. Is, is basically this example where there's between the left and right image, there's really similar, uh, you know, human pose visible and, and a really similar part of the person visible. Mm -hmm. And and yet on the, the image on the left, the, the model's basically able to say the person is probably sitting. Mm -hmm. and, and on the image on the right, it can kind of see, you know, maybe they're picking something up, setting it down, and, and they're actually standing in kind of this bent over pose. Um, and and so, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I just had one curiosity. Like uh, this reconstruction thing, did you guys do it from scratch or was any other paper used as a reference or uh, like how re uh, the reconstruction methodology? Yeah, yeah. So, so the, uh, in, in terms of actually generating the, the reconstruction, the, we, like I was kind of saying, the, we start, we're basically starting from these models like HMR and, and they're like, you know, from an image, they can already generate like a good mesh in, in the case that like, it, it's kind of this usual human pose data set. Okay. Uh, does, does that answer your question or? Yes. yes, yes. Okay. So, so like, yeah, we, we start with these, which already do a good job, but basically like, you know, our, our point is that, they, you know, in, 
on the internet video they look they look silly and yeah, then yeah. but but basically with this like really simple you know kind of self-training with with this you know a little bit of pre-training and some cropping we can we can make it look really nice does this answer your question somebody yes sir. Understood. Yeah, yeah. Cool. so here uh, i had this one basic doubt how do you compare accuracy because your input has uh, is so cropped up and you're trying to reconstruct the entire pose so where does accuracy come into play here because you don't have the complete image nothing to compare it with so how do you determine accuracy of the reconstruction yeah 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 so okay so in in a b testing like we can see that actually only like you, you, we, the image looks like this, like this, mm -hmm. this, uh, you know, rectum and, and our output that we evaluate is based on like a larger region. So we do see some outside the image. Mm -hmm. Um, when, when the person evaluates, uh, they, they can't see the entire body, but like, like I was kind of saying at the, at the beginning, like you and I know like what a person looks like, like we can imagine yes. basically where the person is. So, uh -huh. so, so, so it's, it's actually really easy for human annotators to say like, this mesh is much better than this one okay, for, okay. for this image. And, okay. and same thing goes for good or bad. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, and then that's, that was the point with key points is that we, we actually start for, for, for the key point evaluation. We start with these images that are larger mm -hmm. and then we, we crop them to look like, to look like this. So, so then we can actually evaluate outside. So the, yeah. These are, this is a good question that like, of course, we we had to struggle a lot with when we were trying to you know evaluate. Good. And did you automate the annotation or uh, it was manually done? Yeah. So so the uh, like these were all we used like this website called the Hive. .ai, mm -hmm. which it's it's like Amazon Mechanical Turk basically, except like I think it's you know cheaper or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or maybe you know better or somehow. Good. But yeah, basically it's like, you know, we give workers these large batches of images and then they compare and we, and we like randomize all of them. So they don't know, they don't have a bias, like, Got you know, it. to easily cheat and say, oh, the left is always better or something like that. Good. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So, so then looking at the quantitative results, um, when, when we compare this, this, so the first line is the base, and this is like the original HMR or CMR is the other very similar model that we use, um, which, which, you know, the, the key point accuracy is not, not particularly high, um, with, with using the cropping on cropped pre-training, the, uh, accuracy goes up, but, um, uh, the, the best results are using self-training on video kind of as we expected and this is this is like an example where we can say this is the input and this is this is kind of what we're actually evaluating on but if, if we look at specifically the the key points outside of images then we see that the gains from the self-training are, are quite large so you know something like triple uh the pck between the base method and ours and especially the self-training on video improves uh, PCK quite a lot, um, which is which is kind of what we thought because you know we said earlier that the cropping can allow the models to identify the pose, but it it doesn't do a good job of matching it up with what the entire body would look like even outside of images. So so we can see there's quite a bit of improvement here. Um, and then if, if we, we look at the, the mesh judgments where we say, you know, people are asking what percentage of the time are the predictions generally good or are they bad? Uh, we, we basically see the same results where, uh, the cropping improves both methods, but then the, the training on video improves further. Oh, and then we, we, I don't show AB testing in a slide deck, but it's, it's like the, the same results. And it's actually, it's actually a bit stronger. Like mm -hmm. the training on video almost always looks slightly better, even if it's not that much better, um, which is kind of interesting.
Um, so, so then we also evaluate on these other data sets. So that was all evaluation on VLOG, which is the same set, uh, you know, everything is, is trained upon. But so, so, so then we also evaluate on these other data sets to say, you know, maybe, maybe our, uh, the self-training on, on VLOG is, is, good for, is good for vlogs, but it doesn't really work on other types of internet video. Um, but what we see is actually, it ends up working basically just as well as the, on these other data sets, more or less. Some of them a little worse and some of them actually uh, quite a bit better. Um, uh, across, you know, instructional videos, cooking videos, and, uh, you know, I guess more instructional videos. And if we look at key point accuracy, it basically says the same thing. There's, there's kind of this one interesting caveat where uh, crops, just the crops do better than self-training on video on the instructional videos, although it's, it's very close. Um, and, and basically the reason for this is that um, the, the instructional video data set, it basically has this kind of interesting setting where like in almost all the examples, like people are bending over to like fix cars or to do CPR or like make coffee or to like make plants. And this, this is like, there's a lot of images in MPII, which is like the original data set where people are bending over as well. Like there's like a lot of sports swimming and stuff like this. And there's less than VLOG. So it, it's kind of less, it hasn't learned that pose as much. Um, and there also aren't as many context clues like the tables and sinks, which kind of give a hint. Um, like especially a lot of the car repair, it's, it doesn't have this. But um, so, so, the, so the key point accuracy is slightly worse, but Basically, if we look at the, uh, the human judgments, which say, you know, how good is the actual 3D mesh quality, it's, it's still actually quite a bit better than, than crops, even on, in the setting. Um, and then in other, in other, on other uh, data sets, the, the results are actually quite a bit better um, between cropping and eyes. So that's, the, that's kind of the experiments we'll show. Um, any, any questions on those? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, Chris, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we have a Q and A then, so I think people okay. will be more. Uh, yeah. Sweet. Okay, so let's let's revisit our experimental questions. Um, and the first one was, how well do the current methods work? And and generally, the answer kind of is they struggle. So if if we look at PCK on on a lot of the two D. Uh, data sets like the accuracy could be as high as like 90%. And on on instructions, for example, uh, this model CMR gets like 32% correct. And this is this is not a surprise, like it wasn't trained for this, but it's just kind of interesting to know this is how low, uh, how, how difficult this is. Uh, however, you know, with, with our method, we can actually uh, improve performance quite a lot. Um, like the, the, the probability of having a good, good mesh prediction on the cross test data set, we, we improved by like 25%. Um, and actually comparing to just crops, we can still uh, give quite a big predictions by using our self-training method. Um, like for example, about 11% PCK on the UFIC data set. So in, in summary, uh, we, we basically, you know, we, we proposed this simple uh, method to adapt existing models to internet video. And we saw that the, the results were quite effective. Um, in order to kind of study this, this, uh, this setting, we annotated 13K frames across four video data sets. Um, and, and we evaluated our methods, which, which showed, you know, quite a big improvement. And we also showed that the key point um, accuracy was basically backed up by the human judgment experiments, which showed the same things. Um, and we, we think, uh, you know, getting, getting human pose to work in this model, which is, you know, I would argue much more realistic than a lot of the existing methods is, is quite, a, quite an interesting uh, challenge. And we hope that, you know, we, we see further progress. Um, and then, and that's about it. Uh, I think there, there's kind of an interesting demo we made, which which can kind of visualize more uh, what what poses actually look like 
across across these different data sets. Like, you know, some, a lot of the time there's no head visible or uh, what only arms look like, what the kind of in these, in these uh, you know, partially visible settings. So yeah, that's about all I had. Uh, thank you. And yeah, yeah, very interesting look, look forward to I have to Yay, this kind of uh, representation. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Very interesting talk. Very thank you for the detailed thing. Uh, we'll just go uh, with the audience. Rahul and uh, Nisha, if you have any questions, please go ahead now. Okay. Okay. So maybe I'll stop uh, recording. Uh,